Hello, this is Bruce with Webicator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution Column Phillips came up with that involved filtering a SharePoint list view by a hyperlink column. Column agreed to let us create this video showing a solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL shown here. Now, the problem you may run into is if you have a list that has a hyperlink column. In my case, I've got this favorite cars list and I have this manufacturer site column which is based on hyperlinks that take you to the manufacturer site. As you can see, some of the columns have no values and then some of the columns actually have hyperlinks. And what I like to do is create a view that's filtered by that column. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and create a new view. I'll go ahead and use the standard view and we'll call this demo view. And then if I scroll down, one of the options that I have is to set a filter. The problem is when I look at the choice of filters, we don't see the manufacturer as being a choice in our options. For whatever reason, SharePoint doesn't allow us to use any hyperlink columns, at least not through the browser interface, to create a filtered view. But that's not much of a problem. I'll go ahead and create the view without any kind of filters. Just click the OK button to create it. And then what I'll use is SharePoint Designer to edit this view and add the, uh, and add the column that I want to create the filter based on. So I'll use my list tab. And off of my list tab, I have a handy little link to SharePoint Designer here in the Customize List section. I'll go ahead and click that. Click Yes that allows me to launch SharePoint Designer. This shows me SharePoint Designer's view of my list and if I zoom in I can see my actual views for that list and then there's my demo view so I can select and edit the raw HTML of this view. And what I'll first do is go ahead and add a filter for that manufacturer uh, sites column and I'll have a filter out anything that has blank values or null values in it. So to do that, what I do have to do is edit this view element that's in here. And I've got it in Designer kind of spread out across or scrolling to the right. So I do need to come over here and make it a little bit more organized. So I'm going to scroll to the right. And there's a, a query element. That's what I want to build on top of. So I'm just going to hit return and give my query element its own space. And then I need to build it out. So I'm going to go ahead and overwrite the slash right angle bracket with just a right angle bracket and then this will have designer create the empty element for me the end element and then of course it's empty and what I want to add is something in between the query element so I'll move it down a little bit and then I'm going to add a where clause or a where element unfortunately the IntelliSense doesn't really show me this but it will take it and then I've got a special element that I can add and use for my filtering purposes. And we'll start off with the is null clause. So we'll add that as an actual parent element. And then beneath or inside the parent is null element, we'll add this field reference. And this is where I've got to get it the correct name of the field. And you really should do yourself a favor and not uh, use spaces in your field names, which I did. Uh, now, luckily, I can go down and I've got this view field section, which actually has the fields. And what I need is the internal name uh, of the field. You can see my top speed column there has a space in it. It uses that underscore x0020 underscore. And if I scroll over, I can find that I should have, there it is, the manufacturer site. So I'll just copy this name. Again, if you don't use spaces, you won't have to deal with this. And I'll paste it like that. And I'll go ahead and save this change. Switch back to my browser. And I should be seeing, and I should be seeing in my browser window the view as it was before. If I go ahead and refresh it, I'm already on my demo view. So let me just click the demo view link. So refresh it with the demo view. And if I got it right, it looks like I did. It's filtering it now and only showing columns that are, it's only showing uh, favorite cars that don't have any value in the manufacturer site. 
but I can change this filter a little bit more. We'll switch back and this time we'll only select items that are or that have the word uh, Ferrari in it. So I'm going to take out this is null element and I'm going to replace it with a contains. And then in the contains again I need a field reference. This time I think I'll cheat a little bit more and I'll grab the whole field reference element from the view. So I'll grab that whole element and paste it. And then I need to add another element, a value element. And then this is going to be of type text. And then what I can put inside of this element is the text that I want to filter based on. And I'm going to base my filter on Ferrari. Save this change. Switch back to my favorite car list. Go ahead and click my demo view to, to refresh it. And now I can see that it's only showing items, favorite cars that are, or they have the word Ferrari in the manufacturer site column. Thanks again to Colin Phillips for the inspiration for this video. You can find more articles by Colin on his blog at the address shown here. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.